So letting go of regrets and guilt. So I was born in India, uh, and I moved to Saudi Arabia when I was in third grade. And, uh, you know, I was an asshole of a kid. And I, again, like, I would just, like, pick fights for absolutely no reason. I feel bad for my parents, really. Like, they would get complaints every other day. And uh, I think that's why when it came to eighth grade and it was time to pick a high school, because there were no really good ones around, they were like, we'll send you to boarding school. But not any. They sent us to a military academy by Chicago, right? I'm a kid who has lived most of his life in the hottest part of the world. <laughs> send to fucking Chicago, <laughs> where the wind tears your face. I didn't know this, okay? I didn't even go to Chicago. See, I didn't even see the boarding school. All I saw was images and a call at that time. It was Skype. People who remember, remember. <laughs> Skype. I Skyped the counselor, and that's where my interview was done. And uh, they gave me a good scholarship, and parents are like, I thought at that time, you know, they wanted a good future for me. I'm pretty sure they did. But it was probably because they want to get rid of my an ambitious dumbass from home so they don't get complaints anymore. So I'm 14, I'm on this flight, I'm going all the way to Chicago. From my house to there, it's 30 hours, right? Oh, it's shit, all right. <laughs> you get off, uh, you take the car to the airport and it's a seven hour first leg to Amsterdam. And I'm in there, it's, again, Cannot afford first class of business, right? It's economy, like all of us. Um, it's just, I had a crying baby next to me. It's my first time going international. Give me some leeway. And it just smelled like farce the whole time. And it's just a, not a fun trip. And I thought once I get there to the airport, it will be nice and amazing. In America, all I have known about America was from Big Band Theory, you know? Uh, all the good stories. Never been, never know anyone from there, but just from the TV shows. That's all I knew about America. And once, we got, once I landed in Chicago, I'm like, this is the city. This is amazing. But my school was an hour and a half. And people who have been to Midwest, it's not a pleasant ride, I'll tell you that. It was cornfields everywhere I looked. I thought I was going to a prison. I was literally taking a car ride for a straight hour. I looked around, and it was nothing but cornfields as far as I can see. And I finally get there. And, um, you know, I'm a 14-year-old who has an accent, who has no idea. I'm the only Indian kid in the school. And, uh, you know, I want to make friends. I really do. And I don't want to, like, I, like, I could not still miss myself with the culture. I just didn't know how to talk. I didn't know what to do. So, you know, I signed up for a football game. I'm like, I'm super happy. You know, I'm going to make some new friends. So it's a Sunday afternoon. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's those humid days where, like, you walk outside and it makes you feel like the, your clothes just stick to you. And it, it, there's, like, a little sweat drops down your back, and you just feel like you just took a shower, like, five seconds of stepping outside. But I was excited. You know, I got my cleats, I got my shin guard, I got my shorts and my shirt. I'm excited to make some new friends. I don't want to get, uh, you know, I don't make new friends. I don't want to feel alone. I don't want to, like, uh, feel distant anymore. Because I haven't, you know, seen my family. I, the next time I see my family is in a year. And I walk through the field towards, uh, you know, the football field. Uh, it was like a big parade field. And as I get closer, I see big as two pillars. I'm like, hmm, this is not what I remember football field look like. <laughs> so I get closer, but I'm a stubborn. I'm an asshole of a kid. I don't want to be wrong. So I keep walking. I keep walking. And I get there. And instead of accepting, you know, that there was double the size kids throwing a ball around, and that was not the football I knew. The football I knew, you use your leg, and you kick the football around. Like the real way, I'm just saying. Um, but these kids are massive, right? They throw the fall around, and I don't want to be wrong. I want to make friends. I don't want to feel guilty. I don't want to, you know, feel alone. So I say, yes, I know the game. Let's get it. Let's line up. So... I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, 
I get out of the field, the guy tells me to, and then I'll go stand, and he's like, cover the person. See, I know that much, I'll cover, right? Like, wherever he goes, I'll follow him, you know, just follow him around. So, we get there, and as soon as the first down goes, uh, you know, the, the quarterback that I know throws the ball. Um, it's the other team, and so I'm covering this person. And I intercept on the first play. I am so happy. I'm like, oh, I can do something. I'm actually athletic. And I grab the ball and I run. And I run like the wind. I'm so happy. I'm thrilled. My teammates are going to be so happy. They're going to cheer me. I'm going to have the best friends for the rest of my life. And I keep running. And I keep running. And like my legs are cramping. My lungs are, uh, lungs are burning. And I get to the touchdown. And I am slam the ball down. I'm jumping. I'm hoping my friends are going to come and carry me around. They come, my, my teammate comes and slaps me the fuck out of my head. I'm like, why did you do that? You should be cheering me on. He said, you ran the wrong way. <laughs> so that, that's the story of wanting to make friends, guilty of messing things up and things not going the right way and walking back and, you know, it took me a while to make those friends again. But, you know, it taught me one thing, that regardless of how far you're from home, how guilty you get, how worse things get, Things will work out. And now I'm here at Drexel, say eight years later, enjoying and giving us a talk. Thank you so much.